iOS and Android apps have a very different design. iOS apps are written in Objective-C, which runs natively on the phone. And Android apps, they are written in Java, which runs on a virtual machine or Android runtime, and they don't run directly on the CPU of the phone. This makes a huge difference, but of course, Frida has support for both of them. It's made for mobile devices. And when we instrument Java applications with Frida, we will see a lot of indirections because we have to go through the virtual machine every time. In the following, I will show you the same signal example as I had in my first two videos, but this time with the signal messenger on Android so that you can see all the differences. And the best part is you can also do this on your own. You can set up an Android phone in the Android studio without Google Play services, then root it, then use Frida and just try this. But be careful, don't use your primary phone number because adding signal to a second phone only works when resetting the whole message history. All right, and now let's look into signal on Android. Finding the message object is quite challenging in the Android application because also functions for processing web traffic contain message in their name. Before hooking into Signal with Frida, ensure that it was already running and you clicked around in it. This causes the Java class loader to access the functions we are interested in and only then Frida Trace can find them. First, I attach Frida to Signal without tracing. I use the REPL to enumerate all currently loaded classes inside Java. The resulting output shows us way too many classes. What we see first is that the main application classes seem to start with org, thought crime, secure SMS. When searching for message in the classes, many of them match, including web sockets, and this was showing me all the web traffic. To filter out message classes that are not from the main application, I start Frida Trace on classes starting with org, thought crime, secure SMS, further containing message in their name. Now I encounter a Frida bug, which doesn't say a lot. To the best of my knowledge, this happens when special characters in the file names are not escaped correctly, such as the dollar character. Due to this, I need to exclude all function names with dollar. When I detach Frida from Signal, the application crashes, which can happen sometimes. Injecting code into a running process is not always super stable. Anyway, I now continue and trace messages, but exclude dollar from the function names. This time, Frida doesn't crash. Even better, we can see a lot of function calls, including their arguments and return values. This is special about Java because full type information is still contained after compilation. Next, I send myself a hello message. Due to the many hooks, tracing slows down the app. Then the hello message will appear as string in the trace so I can search for it. We can see that outgoing text message dot get message body is called twice. Scrolling back further, we can see how characters in the message are calculated before sending. And before that, you can see me typing character by character. I decide to look into the get message body function since it looks the most promising, since it is related to the message body. Now I search for the handler that Frida Trace generated. It must be a file in the underscore underscore handlers underscore underscore folder that is called get message body. In the handler, it shows that Frida is already parsing input and output types, but we do not have a backtrace. Because we are running this from inside Java, we cannot use Frida internal backtracer, but instrument a Java bridge to request a backtrace directly from Java. For this, I use Android Util Lock class, on which I call get stack trace string. This then parses the stack trace that I throw with a new Java Lang exception. It's really weird syntax here since I'm programming Java via JavaScript. Now let's run this code and enlarge the terminal for the trace. I'm now only running Frida trace on the get message body function. To trigger the code, I have to enter the conversation with myself and send me a message. I get to backtraces, starting at the get message body, going via the database to the main thread. We get a second backtrace going through different threads as well. As you can see, the overall idea of finding the needle in the haystack is very similar, 
on iOS and Android, but on Android, because of the Java virtual machine, the instrumentation is a bit harder.